video because I'm uh, still plowing up some headlands with the deep till, breaking them up on wheat stubble, knocking some weeds down so I can get some uh, cover crop put on here. Now I have this issue, which I added this gauge on. It's a factory gauge, but or it's a white gauge, but still for my power shift, three speed, burn under. I say, well, gee, you're up in the light. That's pretty good. But now if I pull my RPMs back, my pressure drops, pressure drops, still in the green. Grab it back up, she goes up, and it drops an underdrive, and that pegs it. My pressure regulating spool is stuck. I put this gauge on there first time when I originally uh, when I rebuilt the over and under it was working good and this does have an idiot light on it when the pressure gets low beep, 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 beep. and so I put this gauge on to see what was going on and had to pull the spool out which I'll demonstrate here shortly Fleck of something and others gotten in there. Doesn't take hardly anything. Got wedged between the spool and the housing, and now the spool can't move, so it can't regulate the pressure. So it goes too high when I shift to underdrive because nothing's requiring high pressure oil. There's no demand. You go to direct, it drops back quite a bit. Then there's um, some natural leakage off in some of the ceiling rings between shafts. So uh, pressure comes down a little more where I had it set before. I'm not sure if I can get up overdrive pulling this on these headlands with this till down. on here to actually see what's going on. So we'll, uh, through the magic of editing for just a moment, we'll uh, pull that out of there and show you what to do. Okay, the pressure regulating spool is back in here. That's it right there. On these, it sticks out on these uh, super heavy duty units like in the 4225. And it's it's, it's, I can't get my finger in front of the camera. That long thing sticking out. Just, uh, we'll just screw that out. And then we'll have to get the spool out. Just remembered I got this hydropower hanging on the, in the air on the 1850 here, so that makes it kind of easy to show. This is the earlier style plug. The hydropower had the same control spool. It goes in the side of the housing here. Um, this has got the spring in there, and like I say, there's shims right behind this cap. So if you're taking it out on a hydropower, you wanna be careful. Okay, I got the pressure control spool out. This is the spool. It's got 5 16 uh, coarse threads in the back. So you can stick a long bolt, longer than this one. But, um, Stick a bolt in the back, thread it into it, and then you can pull the spool out. Uh, 
this time it didn't take too much effort for me to do it. Uh, a couple of jerks with my hand and it, it, the spool come loose, slid right out. Um, last time I did it, I had to put a pair of vice grips on the bolt once it was threaded into this and kind of pry against that to get it to come out. There was a good piece of fleck of something or another and it wasn't a whole lot. All I had to do was just uh, sand on it a little bit to smooth that rough spot out polish it back up and then when you put it back in use the bolt and then uh, the longer bolt I think the length will kind of depend on your over and under but anyways make sure that spool goes all the way in and out of the hole nice and smooth no hanging up and here's how it works on your earlier ones this cap was uh, a lot shorter and there can be shims back here on the back of the spring this one has shims, but they're actually inside this, which is nice. It keeps it from falling out. Uh, earlier ones, flat cap, you'll want to watch for shims when you take it apart so you don't lose them. Those are just for fine-tuning the pressure. But once it's all together, the pump is pushing oil against this side of the spool. As it gets up to the uh, pressure, which uh, if I remember right, somewhere around 180 PSI, something like that. Anyways, there's a hole in the housing that this starts going past and that lets it maintain that pressure when the pump's turning slower it's not putting out enough volume and so this spool moves forward and covers more of the hole to keep the pressure high when you rev the tractor up or when it's the oil is colder and thicker it pushes back against the spring more and that opens up more of the hole until it equalizes out at that pressure that you've got it set at so at high RPMs, you don't generate too much pressure and break things. And at low pre RPMs, you've got enough pressure to still run things. Oh, my cranes are back. Those must be my service cranes. <laughs> They're like, go away. We want to come out in your drive. Oh, there's all three. Yeah, that's right. I've been hanging out in my driveway lately. So, anyways. That's how that works. And fortunately for me, it wasn't sticking too bad. I don't know if when I shut it off, the spring pressure was able to break the spool free. But uh, I'm just going to buff it up a little bit and clean things up and put it back together and test her out. There we go. Okay. Try to put this in here. Oh yeah, that's much better. So you can see where I've taken it out. And since there's only room for so much in there, you're just gonna have to look at this turbocharger for a moment. Slide that spool back in there. It's turning so easy, I can't get the bolt to thread out. <laughs> I guess that's good. Okay. Got that shorter bolt out that I used, and then I used this long one for the initial extraction, but then it would hit against the transmission wall, so I had to switch ones out. And we want to clean this baby up. Running out of hands. Guess I'll just have to stop. Okay, bolt's all nice and clean. I'm gonna stick it in there and push it into that spool and make sure it goes the whole length without hanging up. Hey look, turbocharger. Yeah, I got my hand down in there. But like I said, there's just not room for anything else once it's... Oh yeah, it moves nice and smooth now. So now I just got to clean up the spring and the cap, stick them back in. That's where it gets fun, is that spring is pretty strong. Not a lot of room to work, so getting that cap shoved back in there and getting the thread started can be a challenge. Doing good. So, got my bolt back out. 
take a break here and, and go wash parts. All right, I've got I've got the uh, spring and uh, doohickey cap in there. Now comes the fun part of uh, there's already pressure against that, getting that baby to squeeze in there can be a challenge. All right, I got it back in there. Looks good. Didn't go too bad. Had to use a pry bar to hold against it while turning it. Let's uh, do the moment of truth here and see if that fixed the problem. Oh yeah! Before when I pulled in the shop at an idle, it would uh, drop right down into the red, almost down to the L. So now it can do full pressure at a, I just shift it into direct, over, direct. That fixed her. Well, now you guys know how to service that spool if it's sticking on you. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching.